Uh, thanks for tuning in, everyone. This is uh, Anthony Smoke. Go ahead and check me out on anthonysmoke.com or on Twitter at Anthony Smoke. Today, we are back in Tableau. We're going to be talking about parameters, specifically how to use parameters to enable uh, user-defined table fields. So as we know, users love Excel. They love looking at tables. And they love to ignore sometimes the visualization aspects of Tableau. You get a requirement, hey, I need this Excel sheet, but I want it in Tableau. So not the most exciting visualization, but what you can do is you can spice up those tables a little bit with a parameter by, again, letting the user select which fields they want to see, giving them a little bit uh, more control. So parameters, they're very useful when you want to add interactivity. Um, they're dynamic uh, user selected values that replace a constant in a calculation. So that's all uh, fine and well, but let's show you how we use them, right? So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to create a parameter, right? You're going to go here, create parameter, and you want to make sure that this is a string and a list. Then you're going to start typing, right? I already have a parameter uh, set up. So we're going to go in here and take a look at it. This is what you're going to make your parameter look like. You're going to name this select dimension one header. Again, it's a string and a list. And these are all of the values uh, that you want to um, enable your user to select, right? So again, customer name, segment, order ID, ship mode, country, state, city, category, subcategory, product name, region, and then in a when they select an A, we're going to have uh, nothing essentially show uh, in our table. So set this up as your first parameter. Then you're going to duplicate. You're going to duplicate this parameter. You'll end up uh, again with with a uh, exact duplicate. You want to change the name though to select dimension two header. All right. Do the same thing to create a uh, select dimension three header. And then another, you're going to create another parameter, and this is for our measure. This is going to hold our, our measure values. And we want that, you know, let's name that select measure. And these are going to be measure values, discount, profit, quantity, and sales, right? And once we do that, let's go here. Uh, parameters aren't very useful if you don't show the parameter control. So let's show the parameter control for all of our newly created parameters. And think of parameters, um, think of parameters as like a, a point guard in basketball, right? It's got a value, but it has to pass it to something. It's no good if it doesn't have a calculated field to pass it to, right? So this parameters like CP3, uh, you know, your calculated fields are going to be like Blake Griffin, you know, Lob City. Take that, uh, take it, uh, take that alley oop and, uh, you know, dunk it on someone, right? Uh, for my international viewers, your parameters like your midfielder, uh, your calculated fields are like your striker. Like you think uh, Rooney to Ronaldo or uh, Lampard to uh, Drogba. Uh, you know, I got some international viewers, so I try and keep my sports references uh, uh, international here. So we need to create now, we need to create a calculated field. So you're going to go in here, you're going to create a calculated field, and we're going to uh, name our first calculated field dimension one header. So again, your dimension one header calculated field has to take a value from a parameter, right? We're going to use a case statement. Case is just a glorified if then else statement it evaluates the value that's coming from your parameter from whatever you select so select dimension one header if i go over here you see i have different values that i can select right if i select customer name it's going to say oh uh, i'm going to evaluate customer name um, i'm going to show you all of the customers um, when you select customer name if you select segment uh, as your parameter i'm going to show you all of the segment values uh, so on so forth till you get down to NA then it's going to show you nothing right to uh, you got empty string here so set that uh, calculated field up I'm going to call that dimension one header and you're going to you're going to copy it you're going to create a dimension two header the only difference is again you're going to change the one to a two same thing here it's it has to um, link up to a, a parameter we don't want it to link up to select dimension one header we want it linked up to select a, a dimension two header so you change that one to a two same deal for dimension three and we're also going to create 
a measure header for our uh, for our measure value. So if we go in here uh, again, select it's going to uh, consider the select measure parameter. If it's discount, if you select discount here, then we're going to make it show the average discount. I, I put an average just so you can see that not everything has to be sum. This could be min, it could be max, it could be median, right? Um, it doesn't matter what, what you put in here aggregation wise. So uh, if I select profit from our, from our measure parameter, it's going to sum profit, again, so on, so forth. And our, our measure parameter is going to feed not only the measure, the actual aggregation that we see when we drag it into our, our table, but it's also going to change uh, the label name. So we're going to have to create another calculated field called measure label. Now it's a little different than the uh, the actual measure header down here in measures because when you select a, a measure here in your parameter, uh, it's going to show, um, if you select discount, it's going to literally show discount as the label header. Profit, it's going to literally show profit, so on and so forth. So once you have that all set up and you understand uh, the connection, I've got a parameter and it feeds a calculated field, whether that be a dimension or a measure, right? You're going to drag in, let's say dimension one header, we're going to put that here, dimension two header, dimension three. Uh, we're going to put our measure header here and we're going to put our measure label kind of up top here. And of course, I want this to be a table. Oh, let's drag our measure label back up there. So as you can see, it's showing sales because I have sales selected here as my parameter value. And if I make these just a little bigger here, let's uh, space these out uh, eventually. Come on, work with me here. Oops. There we go. This shouldn't be that difficult. You're killing me. There we go. <laughs> so let's make sure these are in order. Dimension one, dimension two, dimension three. Now, watch what happens when I start selecting values here. If I go to category, right, you'll see that a category uh, pulled in. If I go to subcategory, the subcategory comes in, and then for my third header, let's pick a region, right? And again, everything updates beautifully. You got some interactivity. This is great. I can change my measure. Uh, again, this is going to be the average discount. I could actually make this, um, I could format this, but I don't want to change it to currency because I do have quantity in here, and that is not a currency uh, uh, value. So again, I've got sales. I can change uh, my parameter values and they're updated in my table. So, and I don't have to leave uh, leave it looking like this. I can drag uh, my rows up to columns and you know get get different values here. And you know, I can change the category to state, or I can change it to uh, city. Right? It it doesn't matter. Again, you've got this great uh, interactivity. Of you've spiced up essentially a boring table you've empowered the user so again this has been uh, Anthony Smoke hope you enjoyed this tip uh, you know yeah, take this information get out there and uh, do some great things with your data thanks for watching everyone